Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all it's surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you. Before you leave, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, content creator, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time or more, it don't matter, just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so today is Wednesday, hump day, the last Wednesday of 2023. want to make sure we go out with a bang, and so you guys know on Wednesdays we do our uh, podcast collaborations, my interviews I've done uh, uh, throughout the year, and so with this one, we got a hot one for you guys. We're ending this one with the one that I did with the dynamic host, Mr. Rusty, or excuse me, Rusty Diamond of the uh, All Access Podcast uh met up with him back in October of this year and he had a great time you know talking about my book what if a controversial paradigm shift you know growing up and living in America you know today's age and so much more and so I had a really good time uh talking with him on his podcast you know uh the good thing about this was uh, the second person or third person this year who was of none color <laughs> that I got to speak with uh, in regards you know with my book and, you know like I said that was meant to have these conversations conversations and push the envelope for people from all different walks of life to come to that round table and have these conversations and so I was so happy and grateful for that opportunity uh, and talking with you know Rusty and learning a bit about his background. And so, with that being said, and without me, you know, further yip yapping and jaw jacking, you guys, check out our interview, our audio interview. Then, once we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in Different School. Yeah, here it is. This is Different. How are you doing, Different? I'm good, good, Rusty. How are you? Thank you for having me. Shout out to Great. everybody watching. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. Um, I'm getting an echo right now. Do you have earbuds? Or are, are you? Oh, wait, no, uh, I think it went away. It went away. Went away? It went away. I don't know. I'll take Am it. I... Okay. Yeah, you, you did something. You thought it uh, needed to get fixed, and you just you, you willed it into existence. So yeah. thank oh, you for I doing that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I like it. Yes, thank you so much for having me on your show. Shout out to everybody that watches. Be sure to listen, to subscribe, wherever you at. Uh, thank you for having me. Again, yes, my name is Different. So D-E-I-F-E-R-E-T. Of course, not in every single <laughs> I, I like it. I, I have a, uh, uh, I guess a musical collective. Uh, I don't know if I call us a band, but... Uh, we're, we're called the the embarrassments, but we spell it embarrassingly wrong. So uh, oh, okay, yeah. we spell the embarrassments wrong. But then, you That's know, try 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 to spell embarrassment uh, in the first place. It's, it's hard enough. Uh, how many s's are there? How many uh, r's? No, and, okay. <laughs> I haven't been to school in just about mm, over ten years. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, and we have spell check now. Oh, there you go. That's all we need is spell check. Yeah. I mean, as long as spell check can kind of pick up, unless you get, you know, you get to do something like that, have to auto correct uh, different yeah. or auto correct embarrassments every time you type it. But after a while, it understands that yeah. that's what I'm you're going that's for. It is a SpongeBob mug. Uh, I have this thing. This thing has been with me for like, I think seven, eight years. Been through like five. Five moves. I, I love this thing. This thing is amazing. Uh, are you a SpongeBobber? I don't know if that's the correct. Used to be. I don't know a sponge. A sponge lover, I guess. I used to be. Sponge lover. You know, <laughs> secretly now, you know, I'm in my 30s, so you can't. Really, oh, I love SpongeBob. You're a grown woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I wasn't into it until I think I was maybe 20 or so. I had a friend who had kids. Um, he had kids like when when I was, I don't know, yeah, probably. I, I don't know. So when when I was around twenty, they were what you know SpongeBob watching age, 
He's like, you gotta watch this show with me. The show's great. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, what what is? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I'm oh, yeah. the twenty something year old guy who's loving this show now. So uh, whatever. Uh, but I, I enjoy it, and it uh, you know it's got some some cool stuff. I'm uh, yeah, so I became a fan. Uh, the guy that used to, or the guy that is the voice of it is uh was on a, a show that i really liked before that and uh and then one of the bands that does some of the music for the show is a band i really like and then the show is just uh it's entertaining there's actually uh there's this i don't know how much you've seen of this stuff there's like an ai um uh, episodes now. like ai yeah, this ai yeah, that <laughs> Oh man, yeah. yeah. There's a uh, the SpongeBob one that like they go and they take the characters and it's like a 24 hour stream of stuff that they do. It's kind of off. Like someone will put in a suggestion for what what the scene's going to be about, and then AI just sort of does stuff. It's sort of chaotic at some points, but uh, it's yeah, you know, it makes me think that the. Uh, that writer strike is uh, they're probably heard it's over with now. Was it what? Heard it's over with now. It ended earlier this month. I think so. Uh, that is, that's what I saw too. And but I, I mean, they still like they're still like AI writing. Like AI can still do stuff, and uh, there's still some. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much I can be able to do with AI, or whoever else is going to be using AI is just going to kind of pass it by or, or what was happening because I mean like there's a South Park one that they did and I, I'd say probably even this was maybe three months ago or so and I'd say it was probably like 80 85 percent just kind of right on and looked passable for an episode and um, I mean I mean I think South Park did an episode where they use chat GPT to do the episode and so I assume a lot of this stuff can just sort of be you know there's enough you know 26 years of content or a Spongebob kind of, about the same somewhere and there's oh yeah, yeah, yeah they, that, trust me, they won't run out and even if they do they'll just come up with something new but yeah good question where are you from um well right now I live in Connecticut so I, I've kind of been all over. I, I would say I'm from I'm from Oregon. If I had to say something, I lived in Oregon most of my life. So um, I would say that I, I was born in Ohio. Okay, Ohio yeah. boy. Ohio boy, a Buckeye. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I was. Yeah. A few years before I was born, Jerry Springer was my mayor, but I, I wasn't I wasn't alive yet, so it wasn't my mayor. But he was the mayor there, I believe, until I want to say 1980 or so. Um, I was not around. Probably yeah, I wasn't either. I wasn't either. I was a little later, but uh, yeah, he was the mayor, and he got he got in trouble uh, as mayor and got kicked out of office and uh, ended up. You know, doing Jerry Springer stuff, so okay. worked out okay. Worked out what about them. what about you? Where are you from? Where are you? Where are you? From the great state of Texas. I'm from Houston. Oh, but okay. From I, Houston, I've been all over. Um, I work just about everywhere: New York, Atlanta, Maryland, Oklahoma. Yeah, just about everywhere. Okay. Everywhere, and I love to travel. That's um, I guess I should give you guys a little bit of background about me. I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, content creator, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, which is a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services, in which we educate, inspire, and facilitate all influence. So, for those out there wondering, who is this chick just talking? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, and I'm from Houston. I'm 32 years old. I guess some of my hobbies, like I said, I like to travel. Um, I, I have that daredevil spirit, if you will. I'm a Sagittarius, so I love things being adventurous and doing things. What do you like doing? Well, um, what, 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 what dangerous I love writing, TV writing. So you should get this way. You got to go to my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button and see my travel videos. Um, I've been to just about 50 countries before the pandemic, pre-pandemic. And oh. I think 
wildest things I did was a zip line upside down, I think at like 40,000 feet in Peru. So is it still then, are you still attached by like your, uh, you know, attached like by your ankles or something, you're still hooked up sort of with your, your no, like, the about section? Able. Just no, I was about an ankle and I was hanging upside down. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I went parasailing and landed in some cow patties. Um, oh, okay. Face to face with the lioness in, in, in Nairobi, Kenya. And Whoa. How, what were you doing with, on that? Well, How did you so become face to face? Did you zip line right into a, a lion? Well, the way that it happened is we were in the Maasai Reserve uh, campground, and it's not like you would think, you would think like mud huts or anything. They had a really nice big tent, and it actually had electricity and water and the restrooms and showers inside, and it had mesh windows. And so the next morning, um, I woke up to go to the restroom and it came back. You know, I, I, I learned that the male lions don't actually do the hunting, it's the women. And so early in the morning, the women go out and hunt. And where our our tent was set up, in my tent was set up, I was still by like the little woods or the forest with the trees. And um, I was right next to a mesh window. So when I come back from the restroom and I get in the bed or my little bed or whatever, my cot, I just so happened to run into the lioness through the mesh window and she was just walking, you know, doing her little tracking. And she caught my eyes and I caught her eyes. And I didn't want to miss that moment by getting the camera and then having her run off and then gone. So I just lived in that moment and just, you know, memorized it in my, my mind, if you will. And, and she gave me a little nod, like, you got this. And I gave her a nod, and she just walked off. It was so surreal and so cool. I have so many, you know, good memories uh, or experience with traveling. So that's why I encourage any and everybody, young, old, doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, get out and travel and experience this life, this world, and just learn new things. There's so many doors that's waiting to be open for you to take that step. And oh, that to me came, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, I have a question though. Uh, so you were saying that you didn't take the picture of it, you wanted to live in the moment. So this is something that I, I mean, cause so you're, you're an influencer and you're a travel, I forgot what the, influence. Time. I, I just decided that I'm a an influencer, and, and about in 2021 or mid 21 is when I started my YouTube channel. Uh -huh. Where I started promoting my travel blog beforehand, it never really hit me to start a travel blog bar. It's not a travel blog, it's, it's a different as well YouTube channel. I'm right. a woman of the past. But with my traveling, um, I did this all pre pandemic, and it never hit me to start a YouTube channel with my, my travel blog until 2021 and being just stuck in the house. Uh, and, and dealing with, you know, mental health issues. Uh, and we'll get into that later. But um, now that I've started to take it more serious, and, you know, with TikTok, everybody has the opportunity to, you know, get exposure and, you know, live out their dreams. Um, I'm going for mine. And so that's just what it is. Um, and going back into it, uh, how getting my mental health in order led to me, you know, writing a book and starting this business and just doing so many things. Um, I guess giving you guys a little background about myself. Um, I had a pretty good childhood up until the time I was in seventh grade. And then me and my family, you know, we ended up homeless uh, for three years, you know, living basically pillow to pillow, sleeping in cars and shelters and parks and you know, bus stops, relatives, even at a crack house at one point. And it stayed like that for me for about three years until the age of 14 when, when I was really placed in foster care by a family member for the first six months. And this was in 2005, so mind you, right before, before Apple had the little the iPad, the iPhone. This is still with LimeWire and Get too. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Remember them. Um, so I, I didn't know anybody's number. <laughs> and it wasn't until six months had passed, I found out through another foster care that stayed in, in Texas. If you age out, they would pay for your tuition to college. So a light bulb went out of my head. I just started, decided I had to be Washington Street smart and elevate to book smart. So when my son, family found out where I was and tried to get me to come home, somebody told me, you know, I can take tuition to stay in Southern Ohio before I back to college. And, and doing so, that was, you know, a trial and tribulation in itself. 
a ship that goes around in the system, you don't have a name, you have an age on there. And um, by the time I aged out, I had been to 16 different schools. So I had like 16 different personalities, if you will. And um, uh, But there was a blessing in disguise. You know, I ended up graduating, going to uh, San Houston State University. Uh, and within that opportunity, so many more doors opened up. I got to start my own student organization titled Head Forward. And one of the uh, segments was where we would go out to different high schools and explain the importance of education. And so that's where my motivational speaking book was planted. I would share my story. And, you know, towards the end, kids would come up to me and tell me, wow, I didn't know the state of Texas would take me to wish to college. I'm going to go to college too. And so that right there, it let me know that I had a story to that needs to be shared and inspired by someone. I also again, got that opportunity to travel. This was my first time going outside the country. I studied abroad. South Korea at Kim Young University, and uh, within those four months of being over there, I had traveled to eight other different countries, Europe, China, and Japan, and so that's where my travel bug was started there in the K-12. Um, I also ended up graduating with my bachelor's in international business. I have two minors in economics and business communications. A few years later, I got my, my master's degree in entrepreneurship. Uh, I had my license sales. So, but saying all that rusty and you know having all those accomplishments and the notches under my belt, it, it didn't mean a damn thing if I didn't have my family together. And so still battling, you know, childhood trauma and dealing with things from my past. You know, I came up from a chaotic environment, so chaos was normal to me. But anybody who grew up in that environment and those, you know, abnormal environment to them, it's normal. And right. so when I had, you know, got taken out of that environment and placed in foster care, I was actually placed in, you know, nice homes, you know, with family, families that look like, well, that look like me, but black people that had nice houses, nice cars, well-paid jobs, and, you know, were educated and went to college. And then, you know, I seen that and saw that that's what I needed to be and wanted to be if I wanted to survive in this life. And, um, but again, to me, it was just too good to be true. So what I would do is self-sabotage for the most part. If the person wasn't getting me to do the right and all, I would sabotage them good to be true and that it wouldn't last and so it was like that for me all throughout high school throughout college and so into my adulthood it started to trek to one, one point um, I started to mess up all the you know career opportunities that came my way and there was one to where I had a meeting with a well-connected person and I let those demons in the back of my head get to me and I you know oh you too country they're not going to like you they're going to take pity on you because you're a foster kid things like that, and I purposely showed up late to their meeting, and they left me sour tasting in their mouth, and for years, I thought about that, I dwelled on that, and amongst other mistakes I had made, until, you know, I was nearly in my 30s, and had to look myself in the mirror, and I knew that ugly truth, that whatever I went through as a child, and things that I might have told, it wasn't my fault, but as an adult, it's on me to deal with, and it's on me to go fix, and so, I'm going to dismiss that notion that, you know, black people don't go through therapy, or some people are too good for therapy, if you will. And then I went to therapy and got the help that I needed for getting the help that one needs to maintain. And uh, as in doing so, that is what led to me, you know, writing this book and starting my business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, and I'm doing so much more. It all started with, you know, facing that ugly truth and having the courage to say, I need help to get my mental health in check. Before, you know, going off the deep end, I'm, again, I'm the captain of my ship, I decide I want to navigate the waters, I decide I want to dive the ship into the ground, this is how I felt in the past, so now we're going to navigate it into a different direction, and so that's what I did, just, you know, talk to the therapist, they encouraged me to get back to something that I love, which is writing, I love journaling, reading about uh, uh, astral projection and chakra healing, you know, I, I just get into that heavenly, and so I've been doing so being stuck in a house for the pandemic. <laughs> uh, Were you in uh, Texas then? I was, I, yeah. I was traveling, and then my flight got canceled. <laughs> so you could be out on. in Texas, but anywhere else you tried to go was kind of shut down, right? Oh, Texas was shut down, too. Eventually, Texas, everything where? got shut down. Yeah, and we were stuck in a house, too, like everybody else. Oh, okay. The one thing about the pandemic that I learned that I loved and liked about it was that we get to work from home, and so now I work from home. <laughs> it's Which, weird that 
people went back. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much where, like, a lot of these corporate, big corporate places, that they're like, why are these people I going refuse. back to work? I refuse. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't blame you. I don't uh, blame you at all. I got to find me a work from home job, Bob, and, and no. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I did. But um, with that, uh, starting my business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, uh, that stems from, you know, my, like you said, my thoughts, you know, being in tune with my chakras, and that's what led to Third Eye. So that, you know, when you're in tune with your heart, when your team and mine are in tune together, then you can achieve and accomplish anything that you see in your mind that you can manifest. And my motto for um, Third Eye Entertainment is manifest, transfer, prepare. When I say manifest, that means moving all the doubts, all the fears, shutting down all the naysayers or ignoring the naysayers, if you will, and replacing it with positive affirmations and seeing it before you can conceive it in your mind. Next, you move on to the planning part. When you plan for what it is that you want, you have to get it out on paper. You have to have a full backup plan or an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown because you know you just don't know when it's going to happen and where you are in life. However, right. you can expect for it to come and know that whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through, you will get through it. And so once you move on to the preparation side, what I mean by prepare is that means to prepare yourself for your inner child house. Financial house in order, your physical house in order, your spiritual house in order. Go mend those broken bridges, cut people off who mean you no well. So whatever it is that you're manifesting for, planning for, when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You know how to answer for the people who are it. That's how I did that. I had a lot of good opportunities to come my way. I just simply tried to let out on the worthy of it. And and again, that stems from you know the yourself and those voices. And Russ, I just want to take this time for anybody out there listening, including you and myself, that may be going through any type of mental anguish, mental issues, mental stress, whatever the case may be. I want you guys out there listening and watching to know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. Talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, Mending broken bridges, cutting people off, do whatever it is that you have to do. You can get on medication if that's the case. Do whatever it is you have to do to keep your mental health in check so you can move on off of this and possibly take your dreams and body with you. That's one thing I've learned about mental health issues that hurt people, hurt people. You don't want to take it out with the wrong person or somebody that you has nothing to do with what you're going through. So, with yeah. that being said, anybody out there who needs or who may be needing mental health resources, please feel free to share with us. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or you can text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check us out, mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988 Lifeline. And to those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching through the Voice Podcast, you guys can check out mcounseling.com. Again, that is spelled M-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. That's uh, for resources for those that are outside of the U.S. You can go to that website and you'll get to see your list of mental health resources per country. And uh, again, even though I am giving you guys these mental health resources, you have to remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you can decide what navigates the waters. Nobody else. Lastly, when it comes to mental health, I want you guys out there just to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you guys are going through, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option, therefore it's not worth it, but don't do it. Oh, I have a question. So, yes. I, I mean, so I, mean, I, I always tell people that they should take their problems and be able to kind of hit them head on eventually because eventually they're going to come up in some place again and it's going to come back. It's not going to stop. I mean, you, you can run for it. For, for, I'm getting an echo again. Uh, so I don't know. That's... That works. That works. I don't know. Uh, you get an echo? Yeah, I'm getting an echo. Um, but, pause if you went away. Uh, 
whatnot. So, I mean, because, I mean, you, you can, you know, jump into anything else for a while, but eventually, you know, stuff that's happened in your past, you will have to, uh, have, you know, come across it again. And whether it's going to be, you know, debilitating and just, make you not be able to move or if it's going to be something that's going to, you know, maybe not bother you. But I, I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff where it's kind of been made to be, I don't know, okay if it's not the right word, but to be able to put it like and not, not deal with it and just – because, I mean, you can, you for sure cannot deal with it, but you can't be for sure that something up that, up like that is not going to come back. And using the word, you like using the word trigger, but can, you know, come back and, and affect you in some sort of way again. And it's going to happen. And, you know, it, it, working through it in some way, you know, understanding it is just so important for being able to, go forward and even with what you were saying with you know you're not taking those opportunities and self-sabotage I mean you you deliberately chose not to do those but then you also wouldn't be where you are now had you taken those you could have been you could have been there you could have been stuck in that corporate job for however long and yeah. having to be in the office you wouldn't have been able to be on here and and talking about what you're talking about today to me and to uh, millions of other people, I mean, you you would have been down that way. And I mean, it's something like, I mean, you chose that, and so like, that's that's where where you are. Like, you gotta make the best of it. Like, it's uh, so, this stuff can't. This. Yeah, kind please. Of one, but let me say this. I know that in and because it was hard for me, and it is still hard for me when it comes to maintaining my mental health check. I, right, I'm going to be honest sure. with you right now, I'm battling depression in myself. However, I realize the power in, in taking back your power and, and healing from your past and not letting things that, that are inevitable keep you down. In 2021, I lost five people in my family back to back to back. And my mother being the last person, she died in my arms the day after Christmas. Her birthday, she passed on October 1st. And so it, it's been very hard for me, especially when it comes to comes around with a birthday or a holiday, you know, it's hard not to contemplate. And I won't say contemplate, but, you know, I won't say, you know, say that I'm suicidal for how I feel about it. You know, when it's times, you know, when it's Christmas time, and I just feel like, you know, I want to be with my mother wherever she is, heaven or hell, I want to be with her. Now, with that being said, you know, that I'm not suicidal and I'm not thinking about taking myself off the map. I have a lot to live for and I got a lot going. However, with that being said, you can't help but feel how you However, right. you have to realize, you know, the power that you, that relies on you, that you have to, to, to maintain. A lot of the times, you know, we, we, I don't want to say we do it to ourselves, but we make the issue bigger than what it is or we add on to it when, you know, we, we just sit there and let things let fester. Excuse me. Um, for me, I, this is how I had to tell myself right there in order to go, you know, get the help. It was the fact that, again, whatever I went through as, as a child, even as a young adult, it may have been my uh, not been my fault or out of my control, but at the end of the day, this is my problem to deal with. If you or anybody out there that's listening and watching, if you guys have any you know, anguish or stress, mental issues that's holding you back in life, you can't move on and get over it, you have to realize it's something you have to fix before you can reach your final destination. I often tell people, you know, if you know that there's an issue that needs to be fixed and you don't want to fix it, you want to sit there and let it fester and be what it is, then it is your fault. You deserve what you get. And I also say, I getting my mental health check saved my life. So I know it's a lot of people out there that's against it and that feel like talking to their therapist is a waste of time, money, especially with medication. I, I kind of feel I have thoughts on that as well. But with that being said, I have realized the power of, you know, talking with a therapist or just, you know, picking up a hobby or finding tools and things that work for me that's going to keep my mental health in check and, and keep or, or maintain the depression. So I don't think you can necessarily, you're always going to have 
issues and trials and tribulations, no matter what you go through or what's the point you're in life. And if you have money or you don't, you're still going to have issues to deal with. And that's just the way life goes. So the trick is you're going to have to constantly find tools and, and resources that will that'll work for you, even if you have to change it up every once in a while, as well as don't let finances or money be the reason why you don't keep your mental health in check. I also hear a lot of people say, oh, well, work is too expensive. Oh, well, I'm not going to pay this amount for this medication here. And then that's understandable. In today's economy, it's understandable. However, there are just too many resources and alternatives out there that are free, you know, online for you for you to use that. And so I say, don't let money be the reason, don't let time be the reason, or you know, bossiness be the reason why you don't keep your mental health in check. But at the end of the day, things that you know keep after you keep <clears throat> bottled up, it will come out eventually. It will come out in the wrong way. You don't want anybody that's innocent has nothing to do with what you going on to get hurt. That's often how it happens. And so yeah. there is power in, the, in healing. There's power in going into your past and going hurt. What I've learned and what I've taken away from, you know, mental health awareness is that you become self-aware. And once you become self-aware of yourself, you realize, you know, what you're willing to put up with and what you won't put up with. Find your voice when you yep. become self-aware. And once you find your voice, you're not afraid to speak up and set boundaries for others and yourself. So yep. it all stems from, you know, healing from your past and, and coming up with tools and resources to keep your mental health in check. And, and then everything else will fall into place so to speak. And again, keep in mind that nothing's going to change overnight and you will always have trials and tribulations that you're going to go through to the day that you die. So there is no one-stop shop fix for, you know, mental health issues. A lot of people think, oh, if I go to the therapist, I'm going to sit down one little session, everything's going to be okay. No, this is a full-on lifetime commitment. So once you decide to keep your mental health in check and keep it in check, you have to know that that's a lifetime commitment that you have to stick with it. So once you start, you can't quit. That's just like if you decide to get your physical house in order. You lose the weight, you stop eating all the junk food, you lose the health, you can't go back to all that junk food. But if you do, you're going to be worse than you are before. Same thing when it comes to your mental health. You can't go into that therapist's office thinking, oh, it's only going to be one little session and I'm going to call up and file my problems and see how I move from now and that'll be that. No, it's a full on commitment that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. It's understandable, again, if you can't afford going every month. But I say there are 12 months into this year, you can break it down quarterly, go 40 times a year. That's, I think that's, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, yeah. Minimum, anybody should, should go. I believe. So at least four times a year, if you know you want to save money, that's what I do. <laughs> and so, as well as I, I look online, I go find Facebook groups, you know, with those who agree with it, and, and as well as with sharing my story, you know, getting out there and voicing, you know, my testimony. And, you know, and I know, you know, me sharing my story with you and anybody out there listening is going to help somebody, you know, save somebody like me, giving those mental health resources. Somebody out there listening is going to get healed watch this and get in it and be a healer. And so that's why I do that's why I share my testimony. That's why, you know, I stop being ashamed and bottled up because when I do, I know that it can help others. That's the one way I figured out how to help myself is by helping others. So when I share yeah. my testimony, share my story, it's inspiring and helping others to see what they're going through and it helps me. But I have one too. Uh, yeah. I have the there's the rusty diamond method. Yeah. Uh, what is so it? people so people who like it also so the one thing I don't charge for is uh, if if people want to come in and work on uh, PTSD or something some traumatic event that may have happened whatever you may think it is it may be that it may be something that would happen before then but so what I do because I mean like you were saying you're gonna have to face it at some point and so. I, I, the only reason I did this one for free is because of how well it works and how in like two hours I can take care of most, at least start to get that 
big peel off the, the big part of the onion open before you got the rest of the onion to yeah. to go through. So the rest of the onions can be coming. But I mean, so what I do is I get people and you uh, get them in you know hypnosis and they're gonna be in like the most relaxed space they can be. They can do it at home. They don't have to come into my office. I don't have an office. So even better, they can be wherever they are, where they're safe and comfortable and um, they don't have to say anything to me. I lead them through it. They, it all happens in in your head and you can tell, tell me stuff that you're seeing if you want to, but you don't have to say anything. And what I do is I have the, the client relive that event and then I do things to that event, give them, you know, things to make it become less impactful each time they watch it back in their head until they're watching it in their head and it doesn't, it's not really impactful anymore. And then it's worked through in your subconscious memory, unconscious memory, mind, and then it's when it happens again, that's what you think of. Like you have this horrible event that happened, whatever it is. But then, you know, you, while this event's going on, you hear, you know, circus music, or you see a bunch of uh, people doing jumping jacks and backflips throughout the, the scene. And so you have a different, whole different memory of what's happening. That's a lot less of a big deal. And plus you've already worked through it in your head. So then anytime it comes up again, you're thinking of that and not the the thing that you're having to hide from. So if people ever want that too, uh, get a hold of me, hypnosisisgreat.com. Just go there or you can call my phone number. It's on there too. And I, uh, like, I mean, I have someone I'm working with on, uh, I mean, on Tuesday for just that. Um, and I mean, it's usually, I, it's, it's kind of come back to bite me for giving out a, a free, well, giving out a free service because it's uh, people. People uh, are. I mean, it's yeah, great. Like, it's great. They, yeah, they're like, okay, well, I can do this and it's free. And like, well, yeah, okay, I'm gonna get on that. But I, I just, I would feel, I feel it's something that nobody's doing it this way with the hypnosis that I'm doing it, mm-hmm. and then just the way it works and the the amount that it works, like how the percentage of success on it is just but you worth every... charge it eventually, right? Not for that. Not for that. If it becomes my whole thing, then that's what it is. And then I'm, I'm, I got myself out of business, but I have plenty of other ways and other things that I do hypnosis you for. You never teach yourself. I, I, I have plenty of other I ways. Been, I never lived a business office pass me by but and i often say the first rule in business if you want people to take you serious you have to take yourself serious and not let anybody play with you so it's some people that will take advantage of that that's the free option and so i would say like <laughs> don't do free forever <laughs> don't okay. do free I, forever. it's the only thing i charge don't charge for because like, so <laughs> i have i hypnotize people for you know hundreds of things and this is the only one so but yeah, I mean, maybe one day I won't, and I can find some way to have, uh, yeah, because I mean, you know, what, what I charge for other stuff is not, not nowhere free. Okay. close to free. <laughs> he said he gets money other ways. Okay, okay, I got yeah. you. Yeah, for, for the right. other hypnosis stuff, is, it's not free, but, um, yeah, but I mean, so, okay, so right now, it's free, so if you want right to, c- c- come get it, come get it right now, so. Yeah, um, Great to come. Yeah. And so, uh, where can people find you then? Different? How can people find you? How they? You got? You got different ways. You got a lot of different, a lot of different ways. Yes. So the main way that you guys can find me is through my website, hypnosisworld.net. Again, it's spelled H I F T R N T S W O R L D dot net. Uh, okay. There you know, my other social media handles, including um, my TikTok, my YouTube channel, and my Instagram. And my YouTube channel is where I like to drop most of my traffic to get people to subscribe and uh, note, hit that notification bell. Uh, like I said, I'm a woman with many hats. I'm an executive person. So when it comes to 
my YouTube channel. I have more than just one topic I talk about. On Mondays, we do the motivational speaking. On Tuesday, we do social awareness topics. On Wednesdays, we do podcasts or interviews that I've done, or collaborations, if you will. On Thursday, we do pop culture or movie reviews. And on Fridays, that is where I got my travel vlog. So again, I encourage you guys to check out uh, Dippy's World YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I used to be on Twitter, but now they call it X, and so I, mean, I didn't know that. So I'm no longer on X. Anyway, yeah, it's saying, I'm saying you're on X is kind of interesting. Uh, Are you on X? Uh, uh, I, I guess I, I I'm not not active, not active oh. on X, but um, I I exist in the X universe. I guess is so I've been on there. Yeah, but I I don't know. So social media is not a strong point of mine. Uh, okay, which I'm learning TikTok. This was just about I'm just not learning TikTok. You you put me on to that website, so I'm definitely gonna check it out. But um, oh, also, yeah. uh, if you guys go to my website, you get a chance to check out my book. What if a controversial paradigm shift? Uh, now this book again um, is intended. I want to say it's intended for a mature audience. It captures the content, and so uh, this is basis of it. It's, it's a book that's written to encourage and uh, inform on thought-provoking conversations about topics that are taboo and often swept under the rug and turned a blind eye to in our society. So, uh, if you were interested, go to my website, dippingsworld.net. And get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, as well as, you know, you guys do hit that subscribe button to my YouTube channel. Um, I want to take this time to thank you, Rusty, for having me on your show. I, I truly appreciate it. You are doing an awesome and amazing job with this, this podcast. Keep going, man. As well as anybody out there, again, that's listening, uh, please remember, you know, mental health is okay to be, not be okay, but don't just sit there and not be okay. Remember, you're the captain of your own ship. Thanks again for being on different. Uh, I enjoyed having you. We'll have to have you back. Uh, you know, next, I do three months usually before I have people back. So whatever that, on January ish. Yeah, if, uh, time. January. We'll get you, get you back in January then. If that's that's cool with you. Just shoot me a message and uh, All right. we'll make it happen. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for everybody out there listening and watching. And again, don't forget uh, go to my YouTube channel, Dipping Squirrel YouTube. Uh, channel as well as my website differentschool.net and again thank you guys so much for showing me all the love and support and thank you Rusty for having me I appreciate the opportunity uh, and happy to come back in January all right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoy listening in, uh, on to my uh, podcast interview I did with the uh, Rusty Nyman of the All Access Podcast. Be sure to check him out. I have his link below in the description and his YouTube channel. So after you guys uh, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel, head on over to his and show him some love, you guys. As you see, we talked a lot, you know, again, about my background and coming up, as well as for my book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift, and talking about, you know, the, the elephant that's always in the room but never seems to be addressed and that's, you know, uh, unsettled racism in America. And so with them, I'm, again, happy to have that conversation. You guys see his opinion on it and my opinion on it. And again, it's, it's not about, you know, whether you're against or for it. It's just the point of having these conversations and putting it out there and, and continuing to have these conversations so that we can push forward and create systemic change. And so if you guys liked our interview and want to see more, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Thank you guys so much. 2023 was an amazing year. Um, another year in the books. Uh, another step close to you know fulfilling my goals and dreams. Uh, and so much more, you guys. And so, again, uh, don't forget, hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe. And, again, after you're done with that, head on over to my website, differencewell.net, and then you check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram and my TikTok. And so, uh, as well as, don't forget, those that are looking for motivational speakers for next year, 
anybody looking to do collaborations with the podcast, get at your girl at my website. Again, I'm free of charge. Just hit me up. And you can send me a DM or look me up on, you know, Instagram and, or send me an email. Whatever the case may be, I ain't hard to find. Just get at your girl while you can. Uh, and also, don't forget my book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available. Although Christmas just passed, you still can give your family and friends a uh, good gift. Uh, again, this book was written to record it in form on um, thought provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So be advised, you guys, that you know, if you can't take this IP, still come into the kitchen. You'll be all right. That's the point of it all, you guys, to have these conversations that need to be had. And that are also swept under the rug and turned about iTunes. And as you guys see, me and Rusty talking about it, it wasn't as bad as people may think. You know, you have your opinions about it, but at least, you know, you put it out there and you can conversate and then you can talk about ways that, you know, we can come up with to create system and change. So, again, although I've set this book up in a controversial matter, and yes, it will rougher some feathers, the point of it is just to create and talk about, you know, accountability and acknowledgement and, and moving forward and planting seeds for the next generation. So again, go to my website, differencewell.net, and get a copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And again, you guys, thank you all for the love and support. I keep it coming. I can't wait to see what 2024 has in store for me. And so, you know, with that being said, we're going to move on. Tomorrow, uh, we have what's tomorrow? It's Thursday. Uh, it's last Thursday of 2023, so I'm dropping another one for you guys. I don't know if I'll do a pop culture or a movie review, but again, that's why you guys gotta hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on with your girl, yeah? And also, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and do our mental health check for those that may need it, including myself, that are going through any type of mental anguish, be it you know, depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks. Whatever the case may be, please know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, be it talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, you know, talking with your preacher, uh, excuse me, your pastor, uh, whatever you have to do, do, do whatever it is that you have to, to keep your mental health in check and not go off the deep end and possibly take anybody with you. If you need, or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's out your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can check out incounseling.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters. As well as, I want you guys to remember, whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time of your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So therefore, don't do it. Okay? And so we're going to move on from this health check, bringing it back to some positive vibes, you guys. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed listening in to my audio interview. <clears throat> I did with the Rusty Diamond. Uh, shout out to him again for having me. And again, don't forget to show him some love and some support by checking out his YouTube channel, hitting that subscribe button. Again, I have his uh, description below, or his link in below in the description. <laughs> so again, uh, show him some love. And if you guys, uh, guys again, enjoy listening and uh, my podcast interview, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel, you guys. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell again so when I drop content, you guys come into different world and come and learn. And with that being said, don't forget, you guys, whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Different world, come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but 
provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial death and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.